Welcome to Whispers and Bricks. My name is Ari Sherman. I'm your host. I have with me today Katie Elizabeth Chanakas. Uh, Katie is a Greek American artist working in the entertainment industry for two decades. On Katie's website, chanakas.com, you'll see some of the creative ventures she's been a part of TV, film, acting, voiceovers, music, podcasting, and articles that she has written on Ariana Huffington's publications. Katie is a multidisciplinary artist who utilizes her voice to inspire change and transformation in people who want to make an impact on the world. Katie is a Greek international actress who made her first on-screen network television appearance in 2005. Gracing the silver screens ever since, Chinakas has globalized network television, landing roles on top television series such as CBS's CSI, New York Cold Case, FX Networks, It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia, Law & Order SVU, just to name a few. Chinakas also excelled in film as she booked supporting roles in films with Al Pacino, Robert De Niro, Jessica Simpson, Morgan Freeman, Antonio Banderas, Nicolas Cage, oh my God, and the list goes on and on. Chinakas worked with 19 legendary A-list stars in one year. A working professional voiceover actor in the entertainment industry, Katie specializes in cartoon animation voices with her branded name, Cartoon Katie. Chinakas brought to life characters such as Soup from Minecraft and Georgia as Nancy Drew's best friend. Katie has a raspy golden voice in voiceovers such as Emma Stone, Scarlett Johansson, and Demi Moore. Katie loves being a part of the voiceover entertainment industry. She's a published author of a new poetry book titled A Lover's Fairy, Terry, a Lover's Fairy Tale. Please help me welcome Katie Chanakas. Thank Katie, you. Katie, how are you? Hey, Ari. Thanks for having me. I'm so grateful. Thank you so much. I my heart feels very full and warm right now after hearing the intro. I appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you oh, so much. My pleasure, man. You've, it sounds like you've got, you've had quite a career. You have quite a career uh, going forward. Um, you know, you're still very, very young. So I know you're going to do a lot of, a lot of good things in the future as well. So let me just welcome you to whispers and bricks. And as you know, the whispers are those voices telling us what the right thing to do is. And they represent the good in life and the bricks represent the bad things that we go through in life. And let's be real. Everybody has a brick thrown at them at some point in time or another, some more bricks than others, some less bricks, some bigger bricks and some smaller bricks, but everybody goes through something in life. Nobody's got the perfect life. Okay. Now you come from a large Greek family. And early on, you had this idea that you wanted to have a bunch of kids, but you also had these dreams and goals about having a career. Why don't you talk to us about that a little bit? Sure, sure. Um, it's a great analogy. It's a great analogy, Whisper and Bricks. Love that. Um, so, well, the whispers, I feel like, are the intuitive hits, you know, the, the angel, the whispers, and the bricks, I feel are the things that are the stagnant things that could hold us back, but it's about going around that emotion, you know, going, going past the bricks, breaking the bricks, going through the bricks. So uh, that's, that's my thought on whisper and bricks. Uh, uh, but what, what's the um, question we had? Tell, for the tell, tell me about, tell me about you. Uh, you had to, you made a decision early on in life between yes. career and children. Mm -hmm. talk, talk to me about that. Yeah, ever since I was young, I knew I came from a big Greek family and I wanted eight kids and it was this fantasy and I thought, oh, I'm going to have all these kids and, and um, but I thought I was going to have my first child, you know, and then go off and have a nanny for each one. Like I thought I was going to already be a multi-billionaire by the time I had kids and I was going to have a nanny for each one. And I decided I was going to have children later on in life. And so I found through the journey of life that um, when I decided to model and DJ and produce and act comedy, drama and all these things, I found along the way I've been these have been my babies. I've been these have been my babies that I've been birthing, although I haven't had children yet. And I also found 
you know, I was adopting children when I was a teenager through um, Children International. And so I would support children and be a ripple effect to help out people in the world. But I wasn't having children of my own. And then I saw through the journey of life, all of a sudden, you know, Sandra Bullock and all these people started adopting children. It became, you know, very popularized in Hollywood culture. And then I saw all the like infidelity happening with nannies. And so I started questioning like, okay, do I really want to like have a nanny for each one of my children? Um, You know, do I really want like this for myself? And um, I thought, no, I actually don't want a nanny raising my children when I have children. I, I want to be home with my children. I want them traveling with me. So I was very naive in ways, right? And then through the journey, I kind of saw some things and then kind of got practical with what I really wanted, you know, not some businessman who is off traveling because, I mean, being around the world for 20 years, there were so many um, situations of all genders doing infidelity and you know traveling and not 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 going to be out being tempted and maybe traveling I'm like and then I found oh no I can have like a at home partner or something where we could create at the home travel together as a family so a lot of my goals and priorities changed over you know the years and decades of um, you know, seeing what it was like to have a big family and then, um, you know, have children now or later, <laughs> that makes sense. So, but as of now, as of now, you don't have any children, correct? Not yet. Not, Not yet. yet. Okay. But it's still something that is, uh, we're looking at definitely possibilities. Oh yeah, definitely. I mean, I sponsor rental and arrow through children international and she calls me mom, Miss Katie, but a child of my own, I, I haven't had yet. Um, just, just my babies have been my, my career. So hopefully in the near future, it, it'll be a part of my plan. Okay. So let's talk about your career. All right. Sure. Um, I, I know that you went through a lot, um, you know, building your career, Um, you know, maintaining your career, going in many different uh, directions. So let me, let me ask you to start with, at what point in your life did you know that this was going to be your career path? You know, that you were going to go, you know, when we, when did you decide or when did it happen for you that you were going to go Hollywood, you're going to become an actress, you're going to become a singer, you're going to go, when did all that happen? Was that something that you've always wanted to do? Was it something that came later? And it's always, I always wanted it. When I, I remember we had the VHS tapes and we were looking at me in a diaper with this long broom and I'd be singing to my mom's 80s music in our basement and reflecting as a young teenager um, at the videos when I was a kid, even when I was eight and 12. It's like, I just knew I wanted to entertain and make people feel happy. I always just knew. And um, and then I, I remember when I was a teenager in school, still in high school, I wanted to go to California. And I thought about when I was 15, maybe 16 about running away. Like I was researching and finding out like options of like how I could get to Hollywood. And I remember hearing Demi Moore, you know, her story and how she went to Hollywood. And, um, and I decided not to run away and go to Hollywood. I finished school and I, I ran on a full scholarship cross country running at a two year college. And wow. um, yeah. And so what I did was I got into the local market. I was a part of Miss Michigan team. Then I won Miss Michigan Motor City. Um, that gave me the opportunity to be a part of the auto show that goes around America. And I was able to model and be around um, people and travel um, America and, um, you know, be in getting involved in entertainment. So with the local modeling agencies, commercial agencies for TV and film. And I kind of just became a a big fish in in a small pond. I was a small fish in a big pond in Michigan. And then I did everything I could do in Michigan, became a big fish in a small pond. And then when I was 19, I decided I need to make the, the venture to 
go elsewhere. So um, this is when I was doing the auto show, the pageant. And then I started traveling to Paris, Toronto, LA, and New York to decide which um, market I was going to go to. So those are the four I decided. And I went and, I went and visited all places and then decided it was going to be LA. And, and you, um, all this is on your own dime, correct? Like mm-hmm. you, were, nobody was paying for anything for you. Exactly. You were doing everything on your own. And yeah. I, I think we talked about this a little bit before the show. Um, and you had talked to me about um, trying to get your finances in order when, you know, when you first started out, you had, uh, um, I guess, people that were trying to get a, uh, take advantage of you. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, when you t- t- tell us a little bit more about that. In other words, what were some of the bricks that you got hit with when you were starting out in your career and um, throughout your career? What was, you know, what was, well, what was it all about? Well, one of the things that happened was when I was a kid and I was wanting to, you know, have a career and children later, there was this um, stigma and there was this, um, you know, language around it was a, a man's world or it was a business world for a man. So um, I would take action with my energy, my research, my personality, networking, I developed all those things. But when it came to, um, you know, finances, I looked to a man to support me. I looked to a man to be a quote unquote angel investor in, in my dreams, in my career, because I had this great ambition to help the planet and to help the world and to help people. And I thought, oh, like, I didn't think, oh, I'm such a good person, but my actions are um, goodwill with good intentions. So like who wouldn't want to invest in supporting the planet and helping the world (laughs) through creativity. And I found it to be a big challenge where all the guys would just want to sleep with me, um, you know, or they kind of like string you along or, um, you know, they, they wouldn't support, they, they wouldn't support. And it was very challenging. It was very tough. And I mean, it was like days and months and decades and thousands and so many guys because I looked outside of myself you know to a man not to a a, a divine feminine woman or you know um or within my own self to you know build the finances to pursue what I wanted so that was a that was a big challenge for me um that went on for over two decades and um and then I started you know, it was so scary. And I took, I made the choice to invest. I would always invest in myself, but the way that I really wanted the investment of that, like financial investment, when I finally, finally took the step to do it myself, like it was like the first hardest step. But when I did, it's like, it's like you're hooked in. And then all of a sudden there's like this internal growth from within and the oak tree became so strong and then everything started creating branches of their own and it became so much bigger than me because I faced that fear and that thing, that validation I wanted from someone else outside of me when I finally hacked it and did like the only option I didn't do was to invest in myself, then um, things really started to flourish and take a life of their own. Wow. So- Um, so that's how you got out, but let me ask you this. Did you ever fall to a point so low that you said to yourself, you know what? I quit. I can't do it anymore. I'm giving up on my dreams. I don't care anymore. I'm just going to, you know, get into bed, you know, roll into a ball and and just sleep away my life. I mean, did did it ever get that bad? And if it did, all right, well, obviously we know how you came out of it because you just explained that to us. But um, what was what was it like? Did, was, did it ever happen? Uh, not the way that you're saying. No, never, never, never. Because um, I'm not a quitter. And um, I think it's OK to um, take a day off or three days off or a week off and just rest and sleep. Uh, it's the way it's the number one way our immune system can repair um, ourselves, actually, in our immune system through sleeping. It's so it's so good if if one is depressed it's good to like take a nap and sleep it off. Or if like you have a big meal, 
just like sleep it off because it takes four hours for the food to digest, you know, from our system. Um, but there have been times, multiple times where I'm doing so much where I'm, I'm for years, I'm just like, okay, what can I unload? What can I unload? What can I unload? So I'm always looking, you know, as a producer, I'm always filtering, filtering to, you know, be more minimalistic so I can have my health, wealth, and prosperity. Um, but there's never a time of, I'm throwing in the towel and forgetting about it because, um, you know, I have joked around and said, okay, like I'm going to retire from my career and just have a family, <laughs> you know what yeah. I mean? Um, yeah. <laughs> but that's, that's, that's a job within itself. But, um, yeah, so I've, I've never been a person to be a quitter. Like I'm an athlete, you know? And so I don't, I wasn't raised that way and that's not my mentality. Right. I, I, I just love, I love, I love life so much and the arts and being human and just the experience of being here. So no matter on our highest or our worst days, it's a part of the process and I can take it and learn and apply it to a canvas or to a character or to an experience of something I'm going through and put it into my craft. So I look at everything, you know, if I'm feeling this way, that means I've ex experienced something, the extreme opposite of the rainbow of such joy, right? Mm hmm. Wow. This this too shall pass. Yeah, absolutely. Let me ask you this. Who is the one person that you could point to that you would say had the most influence in your life and why? My yeah, my 92 year old grandmother, who's my bestest friend in the world and who I'm named after, actually, Kiryaki, St. Kiryaki. Uh, she was a martyr. Her name's Sunday uh, in Greek. Uh, Kiryaki means Sunday. Um, she taught me unconditional love. I can tell her the worst thing that I think is the worst thing in my life. And she'll just pat me on the shoulder and just feed me some food. <laughs> you know, like <laughs> she's so understanding, but um, culture, risk. She came from the old country from Greece. She went 10 hours each way on a donkey um, to pick blueberries for her job. And um, you know, she came to America to provide a better life for her, her family and for us. And so, you know, I, I'm in deep gratitude and honor for Maya, my grandmother. She's amazing. Um, she's so sweet. And she's just, she's taught me everything, you know, she's taught me so many beautiful things, but um, probably most in, importantly, the culture and, and love and um, the joy of the spirit and remembering Homa, she always says Homa in Greek, that means like the, the land, the dirt, the country, like never forgetting your roots where you come from, you know, and always paying it respect no matter what. Wow, absolutely. Is she still around? She is. She's oh, wow. growing so healthy. She's so healthy. She's great. Thank wow. God. Wow, that's, that's amazing. Um, and there's something to be said, you know, for the old country culture, um, you know, it's so important that, you know, that we take what we can, that we learn from our elders, um, because, you know, as much as we think that, you know, what do they know? This is a new world. They're from the old world, but they know a lot and they can guide us very, very well if we'll just take the time to listen. I know my mom, my mom's taught me a tremendous amount. She is, you know, thank God she's uh, going on. Um, she's 90 years old and, um, you know, she's still going strong. And, you know, she's been, she's been a pillar for the family. All right. And, and, and I think it's wonderful. So let me ask you, do you have any words of wisdom for my audience? Are you there? Yeah. So yeah, can you hear me? Hello. Okay. Now you I can. You can hear me, right? Now I can. Yeah. Oh. Nope. Now you're frozen. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, some words of wisdom. Um, can you hear me? Yes. Now Hello? I can. Yes. Now you're good. Okay. 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 Um. Yeah, of course. Some words of wisdom would be just do it. Uh, it's it's Nike. It's a Greek word. It means to win. And so my mentality at a very young age was just to do it. So it's like the whisper and bricks. When you have an intuitive hit that comes, 
just go and do it. Everything else after that is fear. It's analytical. It's in your head. So just, just go and do it. Um, also, it's really important to have a good community around and communication. And we're only as strong as our weakest link. So if something feels heavy or strong, um, it's really important just to communicate that to someone because they can help us navigate through um, the tangles. And instead of being stuck in the bricks for so long or so with ourselves and isolated, if we just have the courage to communicate inside of ourselves, we can be flowing to keep to keep growing in life together. You know, we don't have to do it all on our own. We can do it with other people. I think that's the experience of one of the reasons why we're here. Mm -hmm. Wow. Um, so what what what's what are you doing now? What's your next project? What are you looking for? I'm looking to get on TV as a household name. So I'm going out for TV shows right now. I'm going out for um, animation roles for voiceovers. So that'd be awesome to book some a lead in an animation series. I go out for commercials, video games, for voiceovers. And season four of my podcast, it's a women empowerment series exploring divine femininity and all genders. And so that's going to launch in January. So I'm excited um, you know, to explore that because not only am I doing it for the people, I'm doing it for myself because of the story I told you of me looking to uh, a masculine man in, in the world. And so I didn't have a lot of um, um, space of divine femininity, a lot of space of um, my, my own grace, although I am graceful, but to be more vulnerable with my emotions and it's okay to not be okay and to fully express myself and cry and you know it can be in all genders so I'm, I'm really excited to um endow that relationship with my own self too um since I felt cut off from it for you know over two decades wow um so do you need to take along like a father figure who can work with you in the voiceover business <laughs> what do you mean <laughs> nothing just kidding. No, tell me what, what you want to be in voiceovers. Oh, I am so good at that. It's not even funny. Oh, Bill Holmes. Uh, he's called the voiceover doctor. If you want to be in voiceovers, you go to Bill Holmes. I it's uh, the, the VO doctor.com. Tell him I sent you or I'll give uh, you his number. We'll, oh, we'll, you have, the, you we'll have take, the home setup. You have the home setup. We'll, we'll, we'll take it. We'll take it offline. Okay. Yeah, sure, sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah he's great. He's, All right. he's the daddy doctor in voiceover. Everyone goes to Bill Holmes. Okay. Now, if people want to get in touch with you, um, you know, they, they interested in, in maybe a career of their own, or they just want some advice, or maybe they're going through some of the things that you went through and trying to figure out how to get past it. What's the best way for them to do that? How, what's the best way to get in touch with you? Would it be uh, email? Would it be uh, social media? What, what's the best way to connect with you? Yeah, I do industry coaching for people. So it's right on my website. They can sign up and have an appointment. Uh, Chinakas.com, C-H-O-N-A-C-A-S.com. And I am on all social media accounts. Okay, great. And you can email me through my website if you want to email me about anything, a question or something. Yeah. Awesome. Katie, thank you so much for sharing your story with my audience. You've been a great guest. I'm very excited. Good luck going forward. I know you're going to do some great things. I mean, you just, you, you've got that personality, you've got that drive, and I know we're going to see great things from you. Thanks again. You've been listening to Whispers and Bricks, and I'm your host, Ari Shum. Remember, if you feel like you're stuck in the mud, like you're spinning your wheels, wasting time in your career, your business, or your life, if you know you're not enjoying all the success, satisfaction, and significance that you desire, then it's time for you to book a call with me at callwithari.com. Check out my Whispers and Bricks Academy. And until next time, listen to the whispers, avoid the bricks, and never, ever give up on your dreams. Bye for now.